So here we go. Okay, so um, as we get started, we're going to be using uh, one to two blankets or maybe towels. All of this is completely optional, so you can do the practice without it. You just might find these things uh, maybe supportive for you. Uh, if you have yoga blocks, you could use that. If not, um, if you have a couple of pillows that might work, um, couch pillows or some other kind, something that's a little firmer. And um, if you uh, don't have blocks, uh, other alternatives might be a book that's, uh, or a stack of books that's close to that size, or maybe a saucepan turned upside down can tend to be, uh, you know, four inches or so high and, and supportive. So these are things that might um, help support you, but they're not necessary for class. And um, we are going to focus on hips today. So we carry a lot of stress and tension in our hips. And specifically, I'm gonna focus on the um, inside and the outside of the hips. So we'll get into some stretches there um, that you may or may not be into. So this is totally optional. If you um, are not feeling supported by any of the stretches and the postures that we go into today, listen to your body and let that opportunity be a time for you to take a posture or stretch that your body is craving during that moment. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, finding your way onto your back. So if you have your posture, uh, your props, you can uh, have uh, the, the towel at, or pillow nearby. And you'll wanna, um, if you're using towels, you'll wanna roll it up into a log. And if you have a pillow, just using that, or blocks, whatever props you might have. I'm gonna demo with my blocks, but you can use anything. So, You'll come down onto your back and bring the soles of the feet together and the knees apart and bring the blocks, the pillows, or the towel rolls underneath your hips. So you want your legs to feel supported. And depending on um, how your hips are feeling today, you might have them closer to the hips, like right underneath them, or you might have them underneath the knees and the outer thighs a bit more. So exploring what feels most supportive for you and if this isn't feeling good in your body at all another alternative would be to have the soles of your feet on the ground wide as your mat and then let the knees gently knock in together this will help release the um, hip flexors and the lower back so if your lower back's feeling really tender today this might be more of a supportive pose for you to start so Taking a couple moments now to see which one of these or maybe something else for your legs feels most supported and finding a place where you feel like you're able to settle. And we're gonna take our arms up overhead. So you might have them at 90 degree angles out from your shoulders or maybe they come up a little more straight where the biceps are a little closer to the ears but somewhere that the shoulders feel like they can release onto the ground where your chest feels broad and wide. Let the palms of the hands face up towards the ceiling, fingers gently curling in towards the palms. And take a moment to settle in and arrive. Noticing if it feels more supported for the eyes to be open or closed. Softening the space between the eyes and behind the eyes, either way. And if you could be 5% more comfortable, what adjustments might you offer to feel more steadiness and ease in your body right now? Knowing that these adjustments are always available to you throughout your practice. Remembering that your body is your greatest teacher and everything that I offer in class today is optional. And it's just an invitation for you to listen and see what feels most supportive. Sometimes what I offer may feel supportive in the body. Sometimes it won't. And in those moments that it doesn't feel like it's right for your body today, 
invite yourself to listen to what would feel good in your body in that moment. Letting your body be your teacher today. Bringing your attention to all the sounds that are swirling around the room that you're in. And letting the sounds come to you. Allowing yourself to lay here and be. Noticing the touch of air on your skin. Notice the difference between where the skin is exposed directly to the air and where the skin is wrapped in the clothing that you're wearing today. Noticing the points of the body that are feeling supported by the earth underneath. And the gentle pressure that you feel where the earth rises up to hold you and the body releases down being supported. Bringing your attention to sensation in the torso. The natural flow of the breath moving in and out of the body, not forcing anything or trying to change anything or fix anything. The torso supported by the surface below and the body breathing itself. Feeling the gentle rise of the abdomen and the rib cage and the chest. Without any effort or force at all, the sensation of the muscles in the front of the torso, gently expanding and stretching, and softening back to center. Next inhale, all the muscles in the back of the torso as they gently stretch and expand on the inhale. Release on the exhale. Next round of breath, front and back of the torso at the same time. Muscles gently stretching away from each other and everything softening back to the center again. A few more rounds of breath like this and let this breath feel so good in your body. Whatever that is for you right now, whatever adjustments you want to make for the breath, breathing in a way that feels nourishing and expansive, supportive and satisfying. Bringing your attention to the area around your heart. Seeing if any kind of intention or heartfelt longing starts to come to the surface. What was it that brought you to class today? What is it that your heart is longing for? Maybe inviting an intention for your practice today. Something to be an anchor to bring you back when the mind gets busy and wanders away. This reminder of why you're here practicing. This longing in your heart that you're listening to and supporting. We'll take a deep inhale here. Four seconds on the way in. Belly, ribs, chest. Open mouth, exhale, side out. <sighs> Two more rounds like that. Inhale, belly, ribs, chest. Exhale, let it feel really good. <sighs> Inhale, expanding, stretching. And exhale, releasing. If your legs are open, you're going to bring your hands down to your thighs and let invite your knees back together again. If your feet are already on the ground, you're going to take your feet as wide as the mat, knees up towards the sky, move any props out of the way that you might have been using for that. 
And we're going to let our knees tick tock left and right. So letting this movement start to build some heat and energy in the body and starting to notice sensation in the hips and the abdomen as you do this. Let it feel really good, like a massage for the lower back and the hips and the inner thighs. And the next time the knees drop over to the left, let them stay there and take your right arm and reach it way up overhead. So you're stretching your right shoulder away from your right hip. Breathing in between the ribs, into the muscles and between the ribs on the right side of the rib cage. And then releasing your arm back down, knees are gonna come up through center over to the right. And we'll take that long stretch through the left side of the body. Reaching the left shoulder away from the left hip, breathing into the left rib cage. Coming back up through center. We're going to bring our feet hip width distance apart now and bring the heels in a little closer to the glutes. Spread your fingers wide, lay your fingers and the arms onto the ground. And we're gonna take the front of the hips towards the rib cage. Navel's drawing back towards the spine and your lower back is lengthening and pressing down into the ground. And from there, let the hips start to rise up into a bridge posture. Try and keep the front of the hips moving towards the rib cage to keep the lower back safe. Press the heels down into the ground and away from you. Pressing your knees and your shins away from the hips. And then release the muscles in the glutes, pressing into the fingers, into the backs of the arms, continuing to notice this heat and energy that we're building in the body. Keeping your feet and your knees where they are, Feet are pressing down into the earth. Now press them away from each other. So we're not moving our knees at all. We're just energetically pulling them out apart with our feet. Starting to turn on muscles on the outside of the hips and the glutes, still pressing down into the earth. Noticing all this heat and energy we're building up in the lower body and watch your breath. So staying here for three more breaths. See if you can make them three to five seconds on the inhale and three to five seconds on the exhale. Letting your breath support you as you're building strength and heat in the body. At the end of your next exhale, we're going to lower the vertebra one at a time down onto the earth. So the slower, the better. Letting it be like a massage for the spine. Hips eventually release onto the ground and we're gonna reach behind the thighs and draw our knees back towards our shoulders. So you might find some movement in your feet here that feels good. Maybe you start to find some movement in the hips and the inner thighs and the lower back that feels good. Circles or whatever feels good in your body right now. And from here, we're gonna lengthen our left leg long down onto the ground. And we still have our hand either behind our thigh or maybe on our shin, whatever feels more supportive for the right leg. And we're going to start to draw our right knee out towards the sides of it. So we're getting more of a stretch in our inner thigh and our groin. And taking some movement here that feels good. So it might be some circles in one direction or the other, some rocking, breathing into the inside of the thigh and the groin and finding some uh, movement that feels supportive. We're going to take our left leg and bring it back up to the center and keep, uh, excuse me, your right leg. And you're going to keep your right hip on the ground and start to stretch the outside of the hip by gently drawing the knee across the midline. So we're not letting our hip come up. We're just keeping the hip grounded and getting a gentle stretch here. Flex your right foot, toes are pulling back towards the knee, so we're activating the muscles in the leg and the outside of the hip here. Breathing into the upper glutes, the outer thigh, IT bands, all the muscles here in our outer upper hip. And from here, we're gonna take our right hand out, palm can be down or up, whatever feels more supportive, and we'll now move into the twist where our right hip lifts up off the ground and our knee moves over towards the left. Your gaze is over at your right hand, and we're just warming up the body now, so this doesn't have to be super deep or um, uh, 
really far into the twist. Just move in a way that feels good in the back and the hip and the neck. And take a, some supportive breaths here. Maybe three to five seconds on the inhale or exhale. And slowly coming back to center, we'll move to the other side. So we're gonna straighten our right leg, draw our left knee back towards the left shoulder. So breathing into the left inner thigh and groin and welcoming in any movement over here that feels good, rocking or circles. And noticing how the side of the body feels different than the first side. Mobility in our hips is different on each side. Uh, strength in our hips is different on each side. So inviting in movement on this side that feels good. It doesn't have to be the same as the other side. And from here, we're gonna keep our left hip grounded and reach onto our, the outside of our left knee, starting to draw that across the midline, left hip staying on the ground, breathing into the outer hip here, outer thigh. Energetically pulling your left hip towards the earth and gently inviting that left knee further across the midline. Moving into the full twist now, left arm extends out from your shoulder and your left leg will move further towards the right, whatever feels supportive. So this doesn't have to be super um, deep or have to be the, the deepest twist you've ever done. You want to notice how your body's feeling right now at this moment in your practice and what kind of movement and posture makes you feel steadiness and ease. Letting your breath continue to lengthen here. Four seconds on the inhale and four seconds on the exhale. Coming back to center again, bringing the soles of the feet on the ground. We're going to cross our right thigh over our left. So the thighs are close together. And you're going to start to draw your knees back towards your chest. So you may find it most supportive for your hands to be right below your knees. And if you're looking for a deeper stretch here, you may start to move down the shin towards your ankles, pulling your ankles back towards your shoulders. Now, this is there's no forcing here. There's nothing here that's uh, muscling your way into this. It's just gentle support with your hands, inviting your knees back towards your chest. There's no specific way this is supposed to look. So we're focusing on how it feels in the hips and the lower back and softening the grip of our hands, making sure we're not forcing anything here, letting our hands rest wherever on our legs we feel most supportive, softening the space, between the eyes and behind the ears. Coming back to your breath. So inviting in four or five seconds on the inhale, and four or five seconds on the exhale. As we move through these different postures, notice where you're feeling the most tension in the body and let your inhale come into those places. Next exhale, releasing the feet back down and we're going to move to the other side. So left thigh is gonna cross over right and start to draw the knees back towards the shoulder, towards the chest. And notice how this side feels different than the other side. Noticing where you feel most supported with your hands right now. There's no need to do the same thing that you did on the other side if it doesn't feel supportive here. Coming back to the breath, taking several nourishing breaths here. Four to five seconds on the inhale, four to five seconds on the exhale. Letting your breath guide directly into the places of tension, offering some support. And the exhales, offering release wherever possible in the body. Releasing the feet back down to the ground. Take them as wide as the mat, if not wider, and then let the knees tick tock left and right a few times. We're gonna find our way up into a seat. So if you want to rock your way up, you're welcome to. You can roll over to your side. <laughs> I'm gonna face you, but you can face the front of your mat. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet together and the knees apart, coming into a butterfly posture. And notice how you feel most supported here. So you might reach on either side of the ankle or the shin. Maybe you cross your wrists and grab the ankles or the shin. We want 
the collarbone to be reaching up towards the sky and the shoulders to start pulling back towards each other, broadening across the chest. So we're engaged through our arms, through our upper back. Notice if you're curling in, maybe you can reach further up your legs so that you feel more supported here and you can find some length in the neck and the shoulders. So once you're finding a place where you're feeling supported, we're gonna bring our chin down to our chest and our shoulder blades are still drawing together, broadening across the collarbone, breathing into the back of the neck. And start to bring your chin over your right shoulder and back up behind you, lengthening the chin up towards the ceiling, staying long in the back of the neck. And then the chin rounds over the left shoulder and coming back to center. So letting these circles be really wide and big. Drawing the circles with your chin and finding a pace that feels really good in the body. One more round in this direction. There's no rush to get there. Stopping anywhere along the way that feels good. And then we'll reverse that. So the chin starts to move over the left shoulder as it reaches up, lengthening through the back of the neck, continuing to draw the shoulder blades together, broadening across the chest, staying engaged in the arms, the legs. Noticing how this sensation is feeling in the neck and the shoulders. And after your third round on this side, coming back to center, releasing your hands, and we're gonna find our way into a tabletop posture. So spreading the fingers wide, we're going to have our shoulders stacked over our wrists and our hips, stacked over our knees. So take a few cat cows here. Something that feels good in the spine, in the neck, in the hips. And then notice if there's any other movement that your body's craving, maybe some circles in the shoulders or the hips. Moving in a way that feels supportive in the body, waking up the spine and continuing to focus on the hips here as we're moving through. We're gonna come back to center. Take your hips over to the right keeping your shoulders stacked over your wrists. So all the muscles in the abdomen are helping to move and stabilize the hips over to the right. And we're gonna take our right shoulder, let your head drop down, and start to reach your right shoulder away from your right hip. So your right hip's pulling back and your right shoulder's pulling forward. Breathing through the outside of the hip and the right side of the body. Coming through center, the head's still hanging down towards the ground. We're gonna move the hips all the way over to the left and then start to draw the left shoulder away from the left hip, breathing through the left side of the body. And slowly coming back to center. We're going to reach our right foot behind us. Toes are pointing down towards the ground. Peek back and make sure that your pinky toe is facing the ground and not out to the side. Draw the navel back towards the spine and reach the front of the hips towards the lower rib cage. Keep a micro bend in your elbows and grip the mat with your fingertips so find stability in the arms and the upper body. From here, we're going to turn our toes out to the right and bring our foot out to the right. Noticing how the weight shifts in your legs and your arms. And then we're gonna bring our foot back so that the toes are pointing down to the starting point. Turning the toes to the right and bringing your leg out to the right, lifting the leg a little bit higher maybe, and then coming back to center. Toes are pointing down, moving the toes out to the right, moving the leg out to the right, and this time placing the right foot down onto the ground next to you. We're pressing the outer edge of that foot down into the ground to activate all the muscles on the outside of the leg, breathing into the inner thigh and the groin. We start to explore some movement here that might feel good, moving the hips forward and backwards. And maybe your body wants to stay in stillness where we started and that's fine too. So 
Maybe you're exploring, maybe you're in stillness, breathing into the places where you're feeling tension here. And finding a place to settle in stillness. You might stay here on your hands, maybe you come down to your forearms. And notice if it feels better for your hips to be stacked over your knee, or if you want to move your hips backwards a little bit. Notice how the sensation changes in your body when you do that, and if that's something that feels supportive or not. And you might stay on forearms, on your hands, or you might reach your hands forward into more of a down dog shape with your upper body, where your biceps are resting by your ears, hips are moving back, and hands are pressing down into the earth breathing into the shoulders and the chest. None of this is better than, so finding a variation of this posture that feels supportive in your body today. All of this is just different sensation, so continuing to listen and support yourself with whatever way your body wants to move today. <clears throat> If your hands or forearms are down, you're gonna find your way back up to your hands underneath your shoulders and bring your right knee back underneath the hip. And taking any movement in tabletop that feels good, maybe a couple cat cows or maybe the hips around or the shoulders. And we will move over to the other side. So you're going to straighten your left leg behind you. In a couple of breaths here, draw the navel back towards the spine, peek back, make sure your toes are pointed down and the front of your hips are drawing up towards the front of your rib cage. Slow and steady with the breath. And we're gonna turn our left toes out to the side and then bring our left foot out to the side. Notice how this side feels different. Maybe you're lifting that left foot a little bit higher, maybe not. And then we're gonna return back to the starting point. Toes pointing down, navel continues to draw back towards the spine, micro bend in the elbows, left toes turn out and move out to the side again in line with your hip. And coming back to the starting point, slow and steady. And then toes turn out to the left, coming back out to the left again with the leg, and this time placing the left foot down on the ground. Pressing into the outer edge of the left foot Stabilizing through the left leg here. Exploring some movement on this side, hips moving forward or backward, something that feels steady and supportive in the hips. So it's normal to have tension and discomfort, but we never want to have any pain. So if there's any pain anywhere, adjusting the posture or finding a different posture that you want to breathe and stretch in. And we'll start to move into that deeper stretch on the side if it feels supportive. So you might stay here. You might move your hips back towards your heels. Maybe you come down to forearms or straighten the arms. All of these are different variations. And you don't have to do the same thing on this side that you did on the other side. Finding a variation of this posture where you feel steady and supported, even if discomfort is here, Somewhere that you can invite your breath in. Four or five seconds on the inhale, and four or five seconds on the exhale. After your next exhale, very slowly finding your hands underneath your shoulders again, left knee comes back, and finding whatever movement feels supportive here, letting the hips come back to a neutral position. <laughs> From here, we're going to tuck our toes, press into the mat, and let our knees hover off of the ground. So draw the front of the hips towards the lower rib cage. Draw the navel back towards the spine, micro bend in the elbows, generating some heat and energy in the center of the body. <clears throat> and we're going to press our toes into the ground and then pull them away from each other, like we're trying to spread the mat apart with our feet turning on all of the muscles in our outer hips. The whole body's working right now, so if there's shaking going on, this is a very good thing. That's what we're going for. And then from here, drop the knees down, take cow, reach the front of the hips away from the rib cage, curl up into cat, press the earth away, 
Tuck your toes, let the hips up towards the sky, finding your way into down dog. Fingers are spread wider than you think they need to be. And take the feet as wide as the mat. Taking a wider stance here. Pressing the mat away from your body, bringing your biceps in line with the ears and bending the knees so that your lower back feels supported here. And inviting in a little movement, if that feels good, maybe one heel comes down and the other. And then we'll bend into our left knee and straighten our right leg. And breathe. Four to five seconds on the inhale, four to five seconds on the exhale. And we'll move to the other side, bending our right knee, straightening through our left leg, continuing to press the mat away with our hands, keeping the spine long, draw the navel back towards the spine. Coming back through to center, we'll walk our feet in hip width distance apart now. Knees are still bent to support the lower back. Pressing the mat away, we're gonna come up to our tiptoes and drop our heels over to the right. So we're on the outer edge of our right foot, the inner edge of our left foot, breathing through the left side of the body. Noticing where else you're feeling tight and tense here, continuing to invite as much of a bend into the knee that feels supported in the back. Coming back up through center, tiptoes, and then over to the left with the heels this time, breathing into the right side of the body. Slow and steady with the breath. So notice when the breath changes, how you might invite in a different kind of way to help it feel smooth and steady, even when things are uncomfortable. Coming back up through center, letting the heels release down towards the earth, knees are bent, or straight, just noticing what feels most supportive here. We're going to take a crisscross walk up to the front of the mat. So you're going to take your right foot, cross it in front of the left, over to the left side of the mat, and step, and then take the left over towards the right, and finding your way to the front of the mat really slowly. Eventually, feet are hip width distance apart, and Enough of a bend in the knee so that the torso can rest down towards the thighs. Noticing if it feels better for you to grab opposite elbows or let the hands hang down towards the earth. The back of the neck is long, top of the head heavy. Enough of a bend in the knee so that the lower back feels supported. Draw the navel back towards the spine and up into the rib cage. Several more breaths here. And in this same position, start pressing your feet down into the mat and pulling the mat apart by bringing your feet away from each other. Everything's still in the same place. We're just energetically pulling the feet away from each other, noticing how that changes sensation in the legs. Drawing the navel back towards the spine. And keeping the same engagement in the legs, feet pulling apart from each other, start to bend the knees a little deeper and one vertebra at a time rolling up. So feet are pulling apart from each other. And we're rolling up through the spine. Take a big stretch up towards the sky, lengthening on the inhale. Exhale, opening up cactus arms. Inhale, arms lengthen overhead. Exhale, right hand behind you, left hand forward. Inhale, coming back up through center, lengthening. Exhale, left hand behind, right hand forward. Inhale through center, we'll do that again. And this time, option to come up to the toes of the right foot, opening and lengthening on the exhale. Inhale, center, option to come to the toes of the left foot, opening and lengthening on the exhale. Inhale back to center. Option to come to toes, or maybe you play around with balance. Micro bend in your left knee, opening up on the exhale. Hand stays, your gaze stays forward for steadiness and comes to your back hand if you want to challenge your balance. Couple rounds of breath here, drawing the right hip forward, lengthening through the spine. Next inhale, come back to center, both feet on the ground. And option to come to your left toes or lift the left leg up. 
micro bend in the right knee, lengthen the spine, your exhale bends, you open here. Noticing which variation feels most supportive on this side. It doesn't have to be the same as the other side. Slow and steady with the breath. Inhale, coming back to center. Exhale, hands to heart center. We'll take a moment here in mountain pose to come back home to the body, to check in. Let your gaze soften on your fingertips or maybe you close your eyes. We'll come back home to the breath. I'm not trying to change anything. Just checking in. How is the breath right now in this moment? And then starting to invite a breath that feels so good in your body. Whatever that is. There's no forcing. Just inviting a breath that feels nourishing and full and good. Noticing sensation on the edges of the skin. Sensation where the feet are supported by the earth below. Are there any adjustments you can make here so that you feel really good in your body? We'll take a deep inhale here. Heavy exhale, sigh it out. <sighs> Blink the eyes open. And we're going to release our hands, take a bend in the knee, feet pressed down into the mat and pull away from each other. Draw the navel back towards the spine. And your hands can come to your hips, elbows reaching back towards each other to broaden across the chest. Keeping your spine long, we're going to start to move the hips back behind us. So the feet are pressing down and away from each other. Hips are moving back, bringing your way back into a half lift. Continuing to press the feet down and away. Draw the navel back towards the spine. Engage all the muscles in the core. Elbows reaching back towards each other, broaden across the chest. Next exhale, release the hands down to the ground. And take a step back with your left foot towards the back of the mat coming into a lunge. So this is a place where you might feel supported by some blocks, or maybe if you're using that saucepan or a stack of books, it might come in. We're going to move our hips left and right and see if there's anything here that feels good. The hips are active, the legs are active, but we're maybe stretching in a way that feels supported in the body. That might be stillness too. You don't have to invite any movement in. We're going to bring our left knee down towards the mat and reach our hips back. So now our left hip is over our left knee and we're straight through the right leg. Toes are pointing up towards the sky. And if you have blocks or something else to support you, that might be something that you invite nearby to feel a little more stable. One or two, whatever feels most supportive, or maybe the fingertips are on the ground. And what we want to do here now, draw the navel back towards the spine, stay engaged through the core. We're going to press our heel down into the mat and pull it back towards our hip. So it's not moving anywhere, but energetically we've now turned on muscles in the back of the leg and the outer hip. And our heels pressing down and pulling back towards the hip and our hips reaching away from the heel. So we're stretching through the outside of the leg, the hamstrings. This feels really intense. You can release any of that engagement or these cues, remembering to listen to your body. We never want any pain. And keeping as much of a bend in the knee that feels supportive in the lower back. So slow and steady with the breath. This may feel um, like it's where you're, you're gonna stay for a little bit. If you're interested in a deeper stretch in the outside of the hip, then you can shift your weight into your right hand. Let your left hand grab the outer edge of your right foot and move your foot over in line with your left knee. So this will be a more of an intense stretch on the outside of the hip, and it's completely optional. None of this is better than. This is just a different kind of stretch. 
So, uh, or a deeper stretch, I'll say. So this heel is still pressing down and pulling back towards your hips and your right hip moving back away from the heel. And notice how the breath is changing. Make sure that you continue to invite that three to four second inhale, three to four second exhale. And you might stay here or shifting your weight into your left hand. You can bring your right bicep next to your right ear and you're gonna reach your arm away from your hip. So this can feel pretty intense. It is absolutely not necessary. Make sure that your core is engaged, keeping the lower back safe. Right heels pressing down into the mat, reaching back, right hip reaching back, and right arm lengthening up over the ear. One more inhale here, four seconds on the way in. Heavy exhale, release back down. If your foot's over to the left, drawing it back in line with the right hip and moving forward into a low lunge. Maybe moving the hips from side to side, a couple of breaths here. You can move the blocks or your props out to the side. From here, we're gonna come up onto the toes of our left foot and lift our left knee up off the ground. Shifting our weight into our left hand, we're gonna turn all 10 toes to the right. So your right toes will come to the right, you'll come to the outer edge of your left foot so that your left toes are now to the right. Once you're here, you have the option to hang out here. Both hands can be on the ground, or you might bring your right hand to your right hip and start to stack your right shoulder over your left shoulder, coming into a twist, opening up the chest, left rib cage reaching towards the ground, right rib cage up towards the sky. And you might say here, or maybe the left hip starts to lower down towards the ground. And you could stay on your left hand or come down to your left forearm. These are all variations, none of it's better than. It's all gonna provide different sensation in the body. So ensuring that you're listening to your body and staying safe. One more breath here, inhale. And exhale, letting the torso shift back towards the ground. All 10 toes are going to move forward again. <clears throat> and we're going to turn all 10 toes now to the left side so that you're in a long stretch here. So you're bending into your right knee. You're pressing into the outer edge of your left foot. <clears throat> and we're going to switch and bend into the left knee and stretch through the right leg now. Your hands can stay underneath your shoulders or you can reach them forward in a down dog shape so that your arms are forward and your ears are between your biceps. Slow and steady with the breath, breathing into the right inner thigh. And then bringing your hands underneath your shoulders if they're there, we'll shift back bending into the right knee all 10 toes go forward, stepping back into your down dog. A few rounds of breath here. Spread the fingers wide, knowing that child's pose is always available to you if your body would like some calming and cooling and centering. Continuing to listen to your body, breathing into the backs of the legs, the back of the torso. If you're in child's pose, lifting up into down dog whenever you're ready. And we're going to start that crisscross walk with the other foot this time. So your left foot's gonna come over to the right side of the mat. And then your right foot to the left side of the mat. Drawing the navel back towards the spine, staying steady and strong in your lower back. Your feet will find their way up to the front of the mat, hip width distance apart. Coming back into this forward fold. This time, notice if it feels better for the legs to be a little more straight or to continue to stay bent. Continuing to draw the navel back towards the spine, up into the rib cage. Let the head hang heavy, breathing into the backs of the legs. Slow and steady with the breath. 
pressing the feet down into the mat and drawing them apart from each other, starting to engage muscles in the backs of the legs, the outer thighs, and then one vertebra at a time, drawing all the way up, lengthening on the inhale, exhale, open up practice arms, and inhale, rise, exhale, open to the right, whichever leg variation you would like, toes on the ground, coming into a balance, noticing how your body feels most supported right now. Spine's lengthening on the inhale, right hip pulling forward on the exhale. Inhale, coming back up to center and we'll move to the other side. Noticing how you feel most supported here. Slow and steady with the breath. Fingers spread wide, heart lifting. Next exhale, coming back to center, lengthen. Hands come to heart center. Draw shoulder blades together. Bend in the knees, feet press down, pull away from each other. And we're gonna to start to move the hips back. Heart moves forward, draw the navel back towards the spine, keep the lower back safe. And slowly finding your hands down to the ground. This time your right foot's going to step back into a lunge with your hands on the ground. A few rounds of breath here, pressing through that right heel, making sure your left knee's over your left ankle, navel drawing back towards the spine. Then you might invite in a little rocking or movement on this side, noticing how this side feels different and how you feel most supported here. Slow and steady with the breath. And then we're gonna drop our right knee down and shift our hips back. Right hip over right knee. Left heel's pressing down into the mat and drawing back towards your left hip, keeping a micro bend in the left knee. And your left hip's reaching away from your left heel. And notice if any of that doesn't feel good in your body, then leave it. None of it is required, but it's all optional. They're just different cues to offer different sensation in the body, depending on how your body feels supportive today. Welcoming in any blocks or props underneath the hands if that feels supportive or is available. And you might stay here, or maybe that right hand comes to the outer edge of the left foot, drawing the left heel in line with the right knee now. Left heel still pressing down and drawing back towards the knee, left hip drawing back towards <clears throat> uh, the mat behind you. And you might stay here, maybe you shift your weight into your right hand and lengthen your left bicep next to your left ear. Now stretching the left side of the body away from the left hip as the left hip stretches away from the left heel. Slow and steady with the breath. One more round of breath here, wherever you are. And then letting both hands come back down to the ground or to some blocks. That right hand may assist that left foot over in line with the left hip again. A couple of rounds of breath here into the back of the left leg. And we'll slowly find our way back to the front. Maybe moving the hips from side to side or inviting in some movement here that feels good on the side of the body. Tucking your back toes, lifting the knee up off the ground. We're gonna turn all 10 toes to the left side this time. Noticing how this side feels different. You're on the outer edge of your right foot and your left toes are pointing towards the left. And then noticing which variation feels most supportive for you here. So you might stay here, both hands on the ground. That left hand may come your left hip. Opening up, stacking your left shoulder on top of your right. Maybe you stay here, maybe the right hip releases down towards the ground, offering more sensation outside of the left hip. And you might stay on your right hand or come down to your right forearm. Noticing how this side feels different, how you can best support yourself here. And slowing the breath down wherever possible. Four or five seconds on the inhale. Four or five seconds on the exhale. 
slowly shifting both hands on the ground, all 10 toes pointing forward, and then pivoting over to the right side of the mat. And we'll bend into our left leg, breathing into the inside of the right thigh, and then shifting, bending into the right leg, breathing into the inside of the left thigh. We have the option here for hands to be underneath your shoulders or reaching forward, finding more of a down dog shape, biceps, hugging the ears, softening the jaw, softening the face, inviting in a breath that feels supportive and nourishing for you. Maybe four or five seconds on the inhale, four or five seconds on the exhale. Bringing your hands underneath your shoulders, finding your way to center so that both legs are straight and turning your toes in just slightly from your heels. And spending a little time here in a forward fold. Noticing if it feels better for your hands to be supported by the ground. Maybe shoulders and neck relax, grabbing opposite elbows. Or if you'd like to broaden across the chest, you might bring the palms of your hands to your sacrum, to your lower back. Fingers are pointing down towards your hips. And drawing your elbows towards each other, broadening across the chest. There might be some other arm variation that you'd like to use right now. Spending several breaths here, breathing into the back of the legs, inviting in as much of a bend in the knee to feel supported here. Drawing the navel back towards the spine, up into the rib cage, and slowing the breath down. Four to five seconds on the inhale, and four to five seconds on the exhale. One more round of breath here, letting it feel supportive and nourishing. And if your hands aren't already on the ground, releasing them here, walking the hands forward, all 10 toes move forward towards the front of the mat. <laughs> Stepping your foot back into a plank and dropping your knees towards the ground. So we're gonna find our way back into butterfly posture. So coming into a seat again, let the soles of the feet come together, knees rest apart. And notice how the sensation changes depending on how close your feet are to your groin or how far away they are from the groin. So finding a place for your feet to rest where you feel most supported in your inner thighs. And you can come back into that wrist cross like we did before, rest on the thighs. This time we're going to um, turn this into more of a passive posture. So if you're interested in staying really active like we were before, you're welcome to. But otherwise, I invite you to start by keeping your spine long and letting your collarbone start to reach towards your toes. And once you've reached your um, range of motion here, then you can allow your head to drop, your back to curl, spend several breaths here, breathing into the inner thighs, into the groin, any other parts of the hips that are feeling a lot of sensation here. Letting your breath go to the places that are feeling most tense. And finding a way to support yourself. Very slowly finding your way back up, chest is broad, and we're going to find our way into the frog pose. So I invite you to bring your mat and fold it over like this. And you might also bring a blanket or a towel and let that rest somewhere underneath where your knees are going to be. Let me make sure I might move the video down a little bit so you can see what's going on here. So the mat is folded over, offering some more padding. And you're going to take your knees wide. This is a stretch for the inside of the thighs. And you want your heels to be in line with the knees and the toes are pointing out towards the side. So look on both sides, making sure that you have that alignment, heels in line with the knees, toes pointing out towards the side. 
And then you might hang out here with your hands underneath your shoulders. This may be right where you want to stay. You might come down onto your forearms. Hang out here, let the head hang down, breathe into the back of the neck. If you're feeling supported here, you might reach your arms forward and let your ears come in line with your biceps, breathing into the back and the chest. Any one of these variations available to support you. And if you're not, if you'd like to feel more sensation in this posture, you're going to start to move your hips back towards your heels. My hips are super tight, so that's not a variation that I'm going to take today, but it is available to you if that's something that your body would like. So wherever you are, breathing into the back of the neck, and breathing down the spine, into the lower back, breathing into the outer hips, and then breathing into the inner thigh and the groin. Noticing where your body is clenching and tightening and inviting your breath there, offering some support, steadiness, and ease. Remembering that we never want pain, or if pain's here, then we want to invite in a variation or an adjustment to help get out of that um, sensation. But for most of us, this is gonna be uncomfortable. We carry a lot of stress, a lot of tension here. So this is an opportunity in our practice to work with using our breath to support ourselves when we're uncomfortable, when we're in a situation that maybe we don't want to be in. So noticing how you might adjust your breath so that you feel supported here. And while you're feeling some discomfort in the thigh and the hips, notice other parts of your body that are feeling supported and at ease right now. Softening the skin of the face and the space behind the ears, the muscles in the neck and the shoulders, the hands. Just noticing what parts of the body are feeling supported and steady, even when other parts are feeling uncomfortable. We'll take three more rounds of breath here. Let them be nourishing and expansive. Four to five seconds on the inhale and four to five seconds on the exhale. Breathing in a way that feels steady in your body. And then from here, our hands are going to come underneath our shoulders and bring your heels together and sit back towards your heels. And then you can welcome your knees back together. You guys did great. That's a tough pose, very uncomfortable for most people. So inviting and in, noticing the sensation of relief after doing a pose like that. <laughs> from here, putting your mat back to the way it was, and we're going to find our way onto our backs. Soles of the feet apart, knees up towards the sky, and then let the knees stick top, left and right. Something that feels good in the lower back, the inner thighs, the outer hips. And then bringing the uh, feet closer together, we're going to cross our right thigh over our left thigh. And welcome our knees back towards our chest again. And just notice how this feels different than when we did it at the beginning of class. So noticing where you want to reach on your thought, your knees or your shins or maybe your ankles or your feet. Just noticing how all those different variations offer a different sensation in the body. And let the lower back spread wide onto the ground. Let your head rest on the earth your shoulder blade softening onto the ground, lessening the grip of the hands wherever they're making contact with the legs. And slowly releasing the feet back down towards the ground, crossing to the other side, left thigh over right, and inviting the knees back towards the chest again. 
breathing here, noticing how this side feels different and how you might adjust the grip or the position of your hands to feel more supported here. Following the sweetness of the breath as it flows in and out of the body. The taste of the breath. Releasing the feet back down. We're gonna reach behind the thighs and draw the knees back towards the shoulders. Invite in any movement here that feels really good. If you're interested in moving towards happy baby, you can reach on the insides of the knees and grab the outsides of the feet. Soles of the feet are gonna come up towards the sky. If you have to lift your head and your shoulders up to grab your feet, then you're going to want to release your head and your shoulders back on the ground and grab wherever your hands reach with the shoulder and the neck on the ground. So that might be the calves, it might be behind the thighs, wherever you can feel supported in the back as it lengthens on the earth. Reaching your feet is not important in this posture. Breathing on the inner thighs, the hips, the lower back. We'll release our feet back down on the ground, crossing your right thigh over your left. We're going to take our arms out to a T and use your left foot to help your hips shift over to the right a couple of inches. So your left hip's going to come down and your right hip's going to stack on top of the left. The knees are dropping over to the left, coming into a twist. If this doesn't feel comfortable, then you can unwind and find a twist that feels good in your body. This is just an option. A little more of a stretch in the outer hips, but it's absolutely not necessary. Let your gaze come over to your right fingertips. Soften the space between the eyes and behind the eyes. And slowing the breath down wherever possible. Inviting in a breath that feels so good in your body, whatever that might be. On your next inhale, slowly bringing the knees back up to center, switching sides so the right thigh is going to cross over the left thigh. Arms are still out in a T. Your right foot will now help you shift your hips over to the left a couple of inches. Knees fall down to the right. Your gaze comes over your left shoulder. Maybe you close your eyes or soften your gaze on your fingertips. Noticing some sensation on the skin of the face, behind the ears, the back of the jaw. Sensation in the shoulders and the hands, the belly, the hips and the feet. Letting everything be just as it is. Slowly coming back to center and unwinding, inviting in any other movement that will allow your practice to feel complete today. A few more breaths just for you. And we'll find our way into a supported Shavasana at the end. If you're sitting somewhere near a chair or a couch, I'll invite you to, uh, when you're ready to go into your final posture, put your legs up on the chair. And if you're not sitting near a chair, then take your pillow or your blanket and put it underneath your knees so that your knees are slightly elevated. If you are near a chair or a couch or something around that height, you will let your feet and your calves rest up on the surface and then your back will rest down on the ground. Or having something else underneath the knees to help support the hips and the lower back. And if neither of those feel comfortable, then finding a posture where you'd like to close your practice tonight, whatever that might be for you, or today, this morning. And if it's supportive to have a blanket or a pillow underneath your head or over your body, you might invite that in right now. And start to settle into your final resting posture of your practice today. Noticing if it feels better for your hands to rest beside your body, palms facing up, 
or maybe one hand rests near your heart and the other hand somewhere on the torso that feels supported. And notice if it feels better for your eyes to be open or closed, softening the space between the eyes and behind the eyes either way. And if you could be 5% more comfortable, invite in any adjustments that would offer ease and steadiness to your mind and your body. And starting to notice the touch of air on your skin. The support of the surface underneath the body rising up to hold you. Allowing yourself to release wherever possible and be supported by the earth below. And starting to let your attention wander through the body, noticing sensations that are here. What parts of the body are feeling most sensation? Not trying to change anything or fix anything. Just noticing what sensations are present. Noticing what emotions and thoughts are present. Noticing how you might feel those thoughts and emotions as sensation in the body. And then noticing if there's one particular sensation that's most calling your attention right now. And letting your attention rest on that sensation. And then seeing if you also feel an opposite to that sensation somewhere in the body. Letting your attention rest on that opposite sensation. And then feeling both of them at the same time, both opposites. Noticing how this affects the body and the mind. And then letting your attention wander and rest on a place in the body that you are feeling comfort and ease. Where are you feeling release, spaciousness, open? The sensation of well being comfort and ease in the body. Allowing this sensation of ease and comfort to start to spread outward as far as it can reach. And if it's supportive, you might imagine this sensation of well-being in the body is a bright white light. And with every exhale, this light grows brighter, like an ember in a fire, glowing brighter and spreading further through the body. Inhaling into this place of well-being and ease and exhaling, growing brighter and spreading further. Allowing your breaths to be supportive and nourishing. There's no forcing. The sense of well being and ease throughout the body. And then letting this drift away and coming back to the natural flow of the breath. 
the body breathing itself. Allow yourself to be just as you are. Affirming that in this moment you are whole and healthy enough as you are. If you'd like to continue resting here, you're more than welcome to stay as long as it would feel supportive for you. If you're ready to start to move on with the rest of your day, inviting in a deeper breath, something that feels satisfying and nourishing. And inviting gentle movement at the ends of the limbs, maybe gently rocking the head left and right if that feels supportive. Noticing how your body is craving to move and invite this movement into the body as you reawaken, whatever feels good. Continuing to invite this satisfying and nourishing breath and staying with this felt sense of comfort and ease in the body, even as you move and reawaken, it's still here. Within the next few breaths, finding your way over onto your favorite side. Maybe your lower arm or a blanket offers a pillow underneath your head. A few breaths here, feeling supported by the earth underneath. In a moment of gratitude, thanking yourself for showing up and practicing today and offering yourself this gift of breath and movement and self-care. When you're ready, pressing into your top hands, finding your way up to a comfortable seat. Somewhere you feel supported, maybe something underneath the hips to offer some ease there. Taking any other movement that feels good in the body as you continue to reawaken. And finding your palms and fingers together at your heart in the gesture of gratitude. Your gaze can rest on your fingertips, so maybe you close your eyes again. Another moment of gratitude, thanking your body for how amazing it is resilient and strong and everything it does right to support you every day. While we'll close together with one last satisfying breath, let your next inhale be so nourishing. Exhale, let it all go. Thank you all so much for sharing your practice with each other and with me this morning. I'm so grateful for your presence and the time you spent. Let me know if you guys have any questions or if there's anything I can do to support you this week. Thank you so much. Take care.